up guys today what we are going to be doing is changing out some drive motor encoders on an RC 5500 um, how I found that these were bad is the symptom that you're going to have is that the truck is going to travel really slow and um, you know you can go into the analyzer and you can monitor the RPM sensor and analyzer and you'll see that one of the encoders uh, is not going to be counting properly and that's that's basically how I determined what happened. So after talking to the customer, I got, you know, because I'm already having to go to the trouble to get in here and to take the mast off of this unit, I just asked the customer if I could go ahead and change both encoders and both motors so that I know that I don't have to come back next week and, you know, do the other side. So I'm just doing both motors. So the easiest part here for me is to just go ahead and take the mast off. So this is taking the accessory uh, hydraulic hoses off and uh, we're just going to go ahead and get this removed. So I'm just going to go ahead and get all the hydraulic hoses disconnected and get um, the two electrical connectors on this unit disconnected and then um, the next thing after that is uh, we'll go ahead and get the tilt. And you'll see how I remove the tilt cylinder rods. I actually don't take any of the pins out because that always leads to problems whenever I go to put them back in. My PWZ pliers probably would have worked good here, but I just grabbed a chisel and knocked this nut loose. And that's all you have to do is you just have to break it loose. You don't have to go crazy. And then you can start turning the rods. And um, what I do is I just turn, you know, one side a little bit out. Then I go to the other side and I turn the other side a little bit out. And I'll just keep doing that until the mast basically falls off of the tilt cylinders. Okay, so the next thing to do is just go ahead and remove the mass cap bolts and the whole mass should be pretty much ready to come off. You might have, you know, some straggler wires or just something that might need to be you know checked so I you know I always just kind of look around and see if I can you know see anything that needs to be removed before I just go yanking this thing off the front Alright guys, so you can see it's really not that bad to remove the mask by yourself as long as you have another uh, forklift of some kind to assist you, you can get it off pretty easily. So the next part is basically, now that I can actually get in here really easily for the motors, I'm just going to remove um, both sets of parking brakes. You need to put in a 10 millimeter um, two 10 millimeter fasteners into the front of these to you know pull the whole brake together if you don't like all the springs and everything will go everywhere and you definitely don't want that so um, you know basically take off the there's a big nut with a folded over washer you remove that and then um, then you can just once you have your your brake um, bolted together you can just unbolt the mounting bolts and take that off and then after that you just take off you know the motor cables and remove all your connectors and just get all of your cabling out of the way and then they'll pretty much be ready to take out
Okay, so getting the motors out was a little bit difficult because they were kind of rusted in place. And so what I did was just use some pry bars to kind of work it out. And then, you know, I used two pry bars at the same time to kind of support the weight of the motor so it didn't just flop out and kind of like pull it out evenly as best I could to make sure I didn't like damage anything or muck the gear up make getting it out. part you know you have these two little um, eight millimeter uh, hex head I think it might even be like a four millimeter bolt or something that's six millimeter and um, they're actually on the front where the cables are you need to remove that I didn't film that for some reason but after that um, you just take these mounting bolts off and then you can kind of knock uh, this whole thing off and get it off of there And this is my little snap-on puller that I'm going to use here to pull uh, this bearing off of the shaft so that I don't damage anything. And I don't know if you can see how those jaws are kind of angled. This thing is really cool. Um, it can get under a lot of awkward things without damaging anything. And then um, the actual cool part about this tool is that the shape of the center pin that actually pulls everything in has that little curve and look it just conveniently you know goes right around the shaft of whatever it is you're pulling off of there so you just impact that down and it's definitely not going to go anywhere and it makes it super simple to get things off now i didn't have a way to press these on so I just used a socket that fit the inner race of the bearing and uh, I used a dead blow to just kind of like easily you know work it down onto the shaft I, you know don't go crazy because you can see here that little plate um, you know was kind of giving me some trouble but you know you just want to work it down on there without damaging anything So the process is going to be the same for the second motor, so I'm not going to like show that again. Um, you know, just go ahead and put um, the fasteners back in that little plate to get it um, pulled in, and then the the little front part for the um, where the motor cables go. I just put those fasteners back in, and then you you just do everything in reverse that you know we just saw, and then um, the last step is going to be after that. To put the mask back on. One pro tip though that I do have is that you want to be really careful with the encoder um, wiring like the routing through that top cap. You do not want to get it pinched anywhere in there because those wires are about as thin as a hair and so if you pinch them and damage them you are not going to be happy when you get this whole thing back together. The thing about putting this mask back on is that there's no like alignment, you know, guides to help you. There's nothing to set it on. You just kind of have to work the mast in a bunch of little movements to get it adjusted properly until it will actually, you know, line up to the mounting holes. But once you get there, it's not too bad to get it there, but it just takes, it's just tedious. You know, that's it. A lot of little tiny adjustments here and there. Okay guys, so this is just test driving it to make sure that everything is good and that the sensors are working correctly. We're back to normal speeds, which we are. So the last step is going to be to torque them down. Uh, the service manual calls for 405 to 440 foot-pounds. And so I went ahead and put 440 foot-pounds on it. And, uh, you know, because I don't want to be the guy that has the mass fall off on me after a week after I do this job. So that's it. It's not really too bad. Um, 
you know, just take your time with it. I appreciate everybody watching this video, and we will see you on the next time around.